Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It is episode 98 of the Local Chat Cast here. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is the one and only Ian Gibson. Thank you for buying so much beef jerky and then just leaving it at my house. I really appreciate it. You are so welcome. While Ian's jerking, Jake is a lurking. What's up, Jake? Um, I thought you were going to say Jake is twerking. You're not, though. Ian no. is literally jerking right now. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, I, did I ever tell you my friend back home uh, in Massachusetts makes beef jerky? And since I have had her jerky, no other jerky has compared. Oh, okay. Now, uh, Will, um, I know this won't be of interest to you, but my cousin who lives in Alaska makes salmon jerky, and it's ooh, very good. That sounds pretty good. I will say this. Turns out... That it's very easy to make beef jerky because Maggie just made it in the oven one time. Granted, we have a convection oven, but she just made it and it turned out pretty good. So yeah, it turns there's out- something about it. Like she buys like these huge, um, is it, like a, it's not a brisket, but it's whatever, the, like big like thing flank. of beef, flank thing. And she trims it all down. And I think for Christmas one year, her husband bought her or they pulled together and got a giant dehydrator. Mm-hmm. And she says every time she makes a bag she she took so long to send it to me because they would just end up eating it before they went to ship it out i was like what, what the fuck so i'll pay like yeah. like 30 or 40 bucks just the cost of the shipping and the uh the piece of meat and uh it lasts it's like she sends ships like a gallon bag full yeah and you're just like you're set it's so honestly it's- i helped maggie a little bit and the hardest part was just thin slicing because even totally. like even like deep fridging the meat so it's much like thicker and heftier to cut with, it was still hard to get like consistent thin sliced jerky because I, I don't really like thick jerky. Yeah. And I think the only difference between it and store bought jerky is the stuff homemade. It's like you're like tearing it, you're ripping it, you're yeah. chewing for a while versus the store bought stuff just kind of like disintegrates or falls apart and it's not, it's not as fun. Uh, Whereas I will say, to work off. Work, work I'm pretty out. sure. I'm pretty sure Bucky's makes their jerky on site, and I've got a Bucky's 25. I'm sure they me. do. Yeah, so. theirs theirs was pretty good. I, uh, I would be interested to try the fresher stuff, but totally. Uh, anyways, that's enough from the jerk cast. It's time to talk about the game cast. That's right, folks. We play video games here. Uh, first, oh god, my first game is another Divergent. So I'm gonna wait. Uh, I'm gonna have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ian's playing a fun game. Oh uh, no! Actually, I'm gonna go first because I- I'm gonna forget it if I don't. Which is why I wrote it down. Do either of you eat canned tuna fish? No, no, not anymore. I'm pretty sure I'm allergic to tuna. God damn. Okay. Well, Halucha, you can answer this when you clip it. Um. So I got a can of tuna fish today, and I opened up, and there was a bone in it. Yeah. And I feel like growing up, that didn't happen very often. Like, you would open a can of tuna. Sometimes you would get a bone. Not very know. often. My mom was always the one who prepared it. Okay. See, this is the worst cast to be able to do this with. <laughs> Anyways, I opened a can today, and I got, a, like, a bone, like, that big in it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, normally if I caught that in the sandwich eating part, I'd be done with tuna for, like, a year. But I found it. I threw it away. Continued to make my sandwich. Ate the sandwich. Anyways, we go to Costco, and Karen's like, hey, let me ask about returning them. Because the last three cans have all had bones in them. And so she goes to the guy and she's like, oh, hey, I was wondering about returning or getting a refund for the tuna cans because I've gotten bones in them. He's like, yeah, that, that happens all the time. They're supposed to have bones in them. And she's just like, what? It's like, yeah, that's normal. You're supposed to have bones in the tuna. And am I crazy? That's not wait, a normal wait, wait a minute. thing. Wait a minute. I feel like the missing part here is, have you looked at the can? Did you accidentally buy bone in tuna? <laughs> there is I was no gonna bone ask the same tuna. thing. You can I, get sometimes, just, uh, boneless sometimes, wings or bone in wings. Sometimes I have accidentally bought seeded grapes. Okay. And it no. is sucks. I understand. There is no bone in tuna. I I googled, <sighs> is there supposed to be bones in tuna? And all of them were like, hey, we don't allow bones in tuna. We have experts who look through the fish and double check to make sure there's not bones in them. I don't know what company it was. But Sounds like yeah. you should call the FDA. I'm just saying, growing I, up, I never had bones in it. 
Okay, but I will say this. I will say this. I fully understand where that guy is coming from because somebody bought cans of tuna, ate the cans of tuna, and is now coming back asking for a True. refund. And you would just say whatever the fuck you need to say to get away, get away from that person, uh, you know? Uh, granted, it, we've, we've opened three out of eight cans. Okay. Which is a good like, amount. And I understand his tactic, but the way he casually said, like, go, yeah, like we yeah. were being like, there were stems in our great bag of grapes. And him being but, like, oh, yeah, there's yeah, stems. Yeah, yeah. Like, the way he's like, he one time, it, One time, my dad, he went to the grocery store. And then two days later, and he bought, like, lettuce for salad. Two days later, he opened up the pack of lettuce, and it was slightly slimy. And he was like, was like, I just bought this. And he took it back to the grocery store, and he got a refund no. on it. And I was like, what are you doing? I, I do not return things. I rarely return things. Uh, it is... I, Karen's very good yeah. at it. But I'll, like... I mean... Everything has its limits. If I buy shoes and they don't fit, I will return them. But like food or like stuff, I don't know. Food, I don't. I don't. Food is look. You bought it, you eat it. If you yeah, don't want to eat it, throw me. it away. Donezo. Yeah. Unless there was a, it's your fault. Like gold doubloon in it. Definitely. Because they can't care. take they can't take return food and put it back on the shelf. It's done. So it's spoiled. Yeah. Basically. Totally. Um. Sorry. Anyways, this is a video game cod podcast, not a tune in jerk podcast. Um. I played a little bit more God of War, and I played the new season of Deep Rock Galactic. I will not talk about either of them because I barely played them. Uh, are you done with Are you done with Ragnarok? Is in like Dunzo? You don't want to touch it anymore. I really don't feel like playing it anymore. Um, <laughs> and it's not, again, uh, granted, it is not a bad game. It is a fantastic game. I, I'm enjoying it, but every time I go back to it. I have to remember how to do the combat. I have to remember to throw the yeah. axe and like fight I'm things. So happy. And I almost turned the difficulty all the way back down. So I was like, I just don't, I just want to get through this. And yeah, I don't know. I, it's just cause I'm tired. Um, I think I'll play it eventually. I think I might have to pl continue playing it for work because there's a lot of stuff Ew. coming up. Uh, but honestly, I may just default and take the spoilers now. I just, I kind of don't yeah. want to keep playing it. I, I, I keep hearing people say good things about it, but pe but people, everybody's hedging their bets. Everybody's like, everybody's like, look, I, first couple hours, I wasn't really into it, but then I got into it. They're like, oh, it's just more of the same. But then this character is really interesting. And I was kind of on the edge. I was like, should this, should I give this a shot or not? Knowing full well, it's not really for me because I didn't like the first one. And then somebody yeah. like spoiled by posting like 30 seconds of a boss fight later in the game. And I watched it and I was immediately off put. I was like, I don't want this. It was like quick time events being thrown off. It was like weird looking characters. And I was like, I'm out. So it honestly, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought I was going to have to play this game for game of the year. And so I kind of resigned myself to that fact. And so therefore I was getting excited. I was like, maybe the sequel will be, will be better. They'll be doing different things. They'll be doing a lot more with it. Something to really mix it up and get me more, more excited about it. Cause the first game I was just kind of tepid on, but it, it, it really does feel like it's just more of the same. And that's, that's a yeah. disappointment and, to me. Yeah. And, and I think to that more of the same doesn't mean bad, which I don't think you're saying either. Just that's clarifying. Um, because <laughs> I mean, it'd be like if another factorio came out and they just changed the color of everything. And you're on a different. Yeah, I'd planet. be upset. I'd be yeah. upset. I play the shit out of it, but I'd be upset. Yeah, exactly. So it's like I would play the shit out of this game. But it's just not time for me to play the shit out of this game. I would honestly. I th was like, oh, I wish I was playing Grounded, or uh, I want to. I want to start <laughs> Pentiment. I want to finish Signalis. I want to finish Citizen Sleeper. But I'm like, ah, oh, I should make some headway in this game so I can like cap some stuff and everything. But again, it's yeah. good. Uh, what should I say? Uh, and then uh, Karen and I played one match of the new season of Deep Rock. It's out on consoles. Uh, they've added like this plague stuff. It's Plague Fall, uh, and there's a new like mini game oh, where these uh, meteorites. Thimble Winter. Yeah, Thimble Winter. These meteorites crash, and you call down like a vacuum or a cleanup kit, and one person sprays foam, and the other person vacuums it up, and you like clean out all this stuff. Uh, and then, of course, new seasons and everything. Uh, I love, I love Deep Rock so uh jake i want to hear from you because i really want to know about pentiment oh yeah please tell me so, about it so yeah i'm maybe three four-ish hours in um that first hour definitely i know i posted in the discord i, I was initially not vibing with it because i i i knew nothing about this game until i think one of you mentioned it at extra life and then i saw it on game pass 
Um, I was not expecting like essentially like a point and click almost um, like point and click, big, deep narrative game. Um, but then it started to unfold and it started to like all the different, everything started to happen. I'm trying to keep mostly spoiler free. Um, I think I would prefer just a little bit more like the narrative is really good and I like the kind of it's like a detective-y kind of thing but I want like a little bit more gaminess like that's I think one the great thing about mm-hmm. Citizen Sleeper is its narrative is all interwoven with like the dice rolling RPG game mechanic-y type stuff um, and this has some little mini game esque type things spread throughout quick time events in in one place um but it's um it's very interesting and it's obviously very um i mean i don't know if it's obviously very historically accurate it has the presentation of being very historically accurate it feels like a lot of research has been done to make the world feel believable Mm-hmm. Um, and by by far the most Martin Luther discourse of any game of 2022. <laughs> um, there's Martin like this Luther. this this won't be a spoiler, yeah. but there's a whole bit like within the first two hours where this nobleman shows up and uh, starts chatting you up because you're an artist, you know, working on your your masterpiece in the Abbey, and um, it's uh, 1518, which. Uh, church historians will know is a year after Martin Luther posted the 95 theses to the church door at Wittenberg. And um, this guy's like, hey, so you're, you know, you're in the Abbey a lot. What do you think about Martin Luther? And I'm like, oh, well, you know, let's talk about it. <laughs> and then later he's like, come have dinner with me in the Abbot. And you're like, I have dinner plans elsewhere. And he's like, no, you're coming to have dinner with us in the Abbey with the Abbot, with the prior, with all the brothers. Don't worry about it. And so then you're having dinner with like all the monks in this big catholic abbey and this rich guy's like so what does everybody think about martin luther and i'm like where is the button to be like bro stop talking about martin luther (laughs) it's like bringing Um, up trump at thanksgiving (laughs) yeah like oh no um and everybody nobody else wants to talk about it and eventually he turns back to you the player character and he's like you agree with me right i'm like buddy <laughs> stop talking about Jake, it Jake, when, well, i know you're not saying this i know you don't mm. want this but when you said you need more game and then you said martin luther i was just picturing like a 93 93 quick time events in a row where you're like trying to do a combo on it and get all 93 <laughs> hammer the paper to the door yeah, yeah. no there like, was oh. there's a there's a wool spinning mini game and oh, yeah. there's one where you have to swat bugs off of yourself um <laughs> What? And what? there's um, uh, using charcoal to to get the imprint of a letter that was written on a piece of paper. It's stuff like that. Um, but no, it's 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 really really good from like a narrative perspective. How everything kind of interwoven. And I did. It has an auto save function, so I did get to a point where I'm like, I have definitely made some mistakes <laughs> I, and I, like I, it's, I cannot go fix them um it just like it, it's got a very good ratcheting of the tension and increasing the stakes um until it gets to a point where i'm like ah, this is not going to end well <laughs> um so i, I think really want to play it yeah i think i'm maybe like a third of the way through it i'm not positive um but that's what it feels like I'm either a third of the way through it or I'm halfway through it based on how the chapters are playing out. I also am excited to play it. I have it installed, but I just have not had an opportunity to sit down and play it. That's not true. I've had an opportunity to play things and I have uh, chosen something else. One other thing I will mention is right at the beginning, it gives you it's one, one of the accessibility options is they've come up with all of these custom font families to um, nice kind of have like a textual perception of how characters speak like the monks all is in this very kind of ornamental kind of script and then the peasants is in more of like a raggedy handwritten script oh i Um, i i want to say there's there's even more tech behind that 
there as is opposed to just font choice. There yeah. is because historically, accurate. if through your dialogue decisions you realize that you have more in common with a certain character, like they are on the same level as you, their font will change to be the same mm-hmm. one that yours is. Um, oh, okay. But it's but only happened there... to me twice. I just know. I feel like we'll. I, I, Brad yeah. yeah. On at the, at the event where they showed it off, they went into depth about the research on the different font types and how they're, was also, they're historically accurate. And yes, there's something else that I can't remember what it it's, was. I believe, it's, I believe it's not that how the letters are revealed is accurate as well as to how the letter is drawn. So it is stroking the letters in, I believe, is what he was talking about. It will, so it will also right. uh, it will lay out the text the first time with the older spellings and then you, there will be like a quick erase and then the letter will change to the oh. contemporary spelling hell uh, yeah cool. yeah which is pretty neat really um, but it. there's there's an accessibility option to turn that off because if you are far enough away from your tv it can be a little difficult to to read <laughs> yeah, in some read. cases um, um i just want to say before i forget that we were talking about this earlier i think wario's 95 thesis micro games would be really good. <laughs> Ooh. So you're like working up and then you got to nail it at the end. But it's like a party game. So oh, like people are racing thinking, up the scrolls. Oh, I'm sorry. You're just thinking. Of, I, I was thinking it's an entire new WarioWare, but it's themed as the Wario yeah, Martin Martin Luther. Luther. This is just the party yeah. mode uh, that you're okay, racing to fair. fill out all the theses. And they're just in random order. So no one's getting the same games at the same time. Yeah, Reese's Theses. Yeah, Reese's Theses. <laughs> yeah. Theses. That's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, the art style is very home. good. The narrative is very interesting. Um, it does. It is kind of a little slow to start, um, but mm-hmm. definitely picks up, and well, then you're, the you're just does, in it. So. What'd you say, Will? <laughs> I said you're on the Series S. It's a little oh, slow. Oh, yeah. Start. slow. Yeah, they had Series S's start. at Costco today. For two seventy with a pair of headphones, like that seems good. Well, the what they announced today, well, not today, we kind of knew it, is that the holiday price of the Series S is two fifty. So for Black Friday and Christmas, and they didn't announce it, an end date, so we don't know if it's going to go back to three hundred or if it's going to stay at two fifty. So is hell of a deal, crazy, yeah, hell of a deal, hell of a deal. Ian, you should definitely turn in that uh, one X now. <laughs> Yeah, I should look into it. Honestly, it's it literally the only thing preventing me from doing it is just sheer laziness. Yeah, I'd even eat the. I want to disc it's drive. Just laziness. Like yeah. I, I was trying to figure out if it was worth the extra price just to have the disc drive. You do you honestly though? Do you need one? Because Xbox game sales happen a lot, and Game Pass happens a lot. Should, I'm more thinking about uh, for media. Playback. I wonder if they could release oh. one. Could you do a third that was the party rumor. one? I wonder. Or no? An external drive station. I don't think so. I don't. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. You... Yeah. They're gonna do HD DVD. It's coming back, baby. But I want to hear about what Ian's been playing specifically. Ian, one I, of them. Yeah, uh, really will one of them. shut the fuck up. <laughs> Damn, you're Mike Karen and I to talk there. Uh. Will, Karen, and I, uh, we started playing Grounded on Tuesday. Ground, Okay, look, Grounded is a survival multiplayer game. You can also play it single player. It Why is who? basically Rust Arc. It's by... Pl- it's not. It's Obsidian, right? <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is funny. It's by Obsidian. It's basically Honey, I Shrunk the Kids turned into a hardcore survival game. Like Rust or Arc or... Uh, you know, Daisy, where you have a thirst meter, you have a hunger meter, you've got enemies that can kill you. You're going around, you're gathering goods and you're crafting them and making stuff. Um, I think what really surprised me about this game, this game came out, I want to say a year and a half, two years ago in early ago. access, but it hit, it hit full launch, full release this year. This is a full ass video game. Like, Will, did you get the impression? Were you surprised by how much of a like real, actual, fully baked video game this is yeah i was expecting like glitchiness or something i don't i wasn't expecting like i had i know the content was added later so i was i knew there'd be content but i was still expecting like stuff to mess up or you kind of know what i mean more more janky kind of but but i was thinking more along the lines of like like rust daisy 
and Ark. I believe all of those have fully launched for several years now. And you go play those games and they're still like ugly ass games, like ugly in terms yeah. of interface, how you interact with things, how they teach you things, how you move through the game world. And, and on top of some glitches and jank like you're talking about, I mean, even something like like Mountain Blade, you know, completely different game, but it launches and you play it and you go, oh, it's just like early access. It has two more mechanics unlocked, but it's still janky and it doesn't onboard you properly. Uh, grounded is like like if if somebody told me this was a seventy dollar game and I paid seventy dollars for it, I would be happy about it because this is like a fully realized game, which in my mind puts it like head and shoulders above pretty much every other survival game out there. Because you talk about Ark, Rust, Daisy, those games were like, hey, cool, we're a survival game, and they put out like a bare bones implementation, and everybody's like, this is great, and then they just kind of barely fix things and added mechanics, and then eventually they launched. But Grounded has like full voice acting, full tutorials, like fully functioning, beautiful UI. Like all of it is just working really well and it's onboarding you and it's tutorializing you and there's like story characters and it just worked and it felt like a full video game. And that's pretty cool. I, I mean, I was having fun playing it. Uh, Will, were you having fun? Yeah, I was having a blast. Literally, Karen, <clears throat> uh, before stream, had loaded it up and she's like, oh, I was going to play this and continue our save. I was like, don't you dare play with this without me. <laughs> I was like, go play God of War, because you said you wanted to play it. So she's playing that now. Uh, yeah. And I've tricked her, because now we're going to play ground. No, um, I, I'm really enjoying it. It's exactly what you said. It's kind of like uh, when we booted up Valheim, and it was just a game that ran and worked and played well. Yeah. Like, I wasn't expecting that with Valheim, and I think that's kind of where you're coming from with this. It, it nails the aesthetic perfectly, uh, and I... and and the way it does the online, like the three of us own a multiplayer game together and all of the quests, tutorials, uh, skill stuff, unlocks is all across the save of the game, not per person. So when Karen went and got the quests, it popped the quest for all of us. When Ian went yeah. and bought stuff in the science center, it unlocked stuff for all of us. When any of us analyze something, et cetera, uh, it's, that is, is probably my favorite thing in this because it's just a, I don't, it's just perfect. Yeah. But even going beyond that, it is it is a shared save. So the idea being any three of us, if we hop on and we're the only person on, we can load that save and progress it. And if somebody else hops on at the same time, then they join they join us in that same save. Um, so it just makes it really easy. A lot of other games are just like, look, is this your game or is this their game? When they log in, you know, if they're the owner of the save, they're going to progress it and you can't access it unless they host the game. And this is like, no, you're all playing the same save file together, basically, whether you're the only person on or there's more than one person on. Um, and we haven't really taxed that or tried it yet. But hearing from other people that it works really well, that's great because because that was kind of the, the difficulty we always have when we're playing sandbox type games together is it's like, OK, if, is it a dedicated server that we have to pay for so that any of us can access it? Or do we have to schedule gaming sessions? So it's it's will save. So he has to host it so that we can join it. Otherwise, you can't really play it. Um, here's the problem, though. I just I don't I'm not sure I'm in the mood for this game right now. There's too much shit going on, like inside and outside of games. So I'm not sure that I want to play this right now, but I'm happy that we have like four or five grounded play dates set up where like we're going to stream it like we're going to stream it Saturday, 9 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be there. We're going to stream it. So I don't have to worry about playing it between now and then I can do whatever else I want. I can play other games. I can do whatever because I'll coming back there's a scheduled time to come back to it I, I i don't know will are you getting the urge at all to play it between streams uh i had the urge today to play it i was like oh i could i could like and it's only because it's that territory of game uh like i told karen hey listen we played a bunch of deep rock before the new season let's finish this act this like tutorial for the new season and then let's like cool off for a bit so we can like we don't burn out on, yeah. on the game. And I was like, and we can play Grounded while we're doing that. So she's on board with that. But I, I see what you're saying. I was kind of feeling that way when you suggested the Minecraft creative. I was like, ah, I don't know if I'm in this super creative mood right now to just go into Minecraft and not do the like mining and the menial tasks mm -hmm. to like fulfill that. So this is definitely hitting that for me is I've been playing so many games that are story driven or... I mean, yeah, story driven or just gameplay driven that now I can just sit back and be like, hey, I got to cut down some blades of grass for half an hour, you know, um, yeah. which is fine with me. So I'm, I'm looking forward to playing it. But again, I'm glad we have the set times 
to yep. to have all three of us there. Yep. So the other game I've been playing, I played probably the first 90 minutes of Signalis, which is the game that Jake can't stop raving about recently. Honestly, a lot of people are raving about it. Um, the, it, it is kind of weird to describe. This is like a very like a uh, CRT slash PS1 slash uh, Resident Evil esque survival horror game, but it's got some sci fi on it. It's got a little bit of anime on it. It's doing a lot of stylish things. I love that the first thing that happens when you boot up the game is they're like, how do you want this game to look? They're like, mm -hmm. do you want the blur? Do you want the CRT filter? Do you want the grain? And I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I have all that on. And it's and it's and it's really cool. Um, it's basically I don't want to call it third person. It really is like a like almost like a Resident Evil one, but without the tank controls because you're mm. you're Though running they give around. you the option to play with tank controls. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, <laughs> it, you're basically like looking down. You're running around different spaces, picking stuff up. You have limited inventory space. There's a little bit of combat. Um, I, I, I am enjoying it so far. I feel like they're really doing a good job of bringing you into this world and slowly doling out story beats. Jake, you you absolutely love this game, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, it's it's one of those that has has stuck with me, but it was um th at a, at a very specific point it turned for me from being like oh yeah I kind of like this to like oh yeah I I yeah. like this and I don't think you're there yet nor nor will you be there for several more hours but I'm not sure that I ever will get there because nothing against this game but i don't really play survival horror games sure and this game is making me realize i still don't like survival horror games <laughs> no I, I, and I that's just, why i was initially yeah. hesitant to add it to the game of the year discussion because i i thought it was maybe just going to be niche to me no but um, i mean to be clear if you think it's you nominate it who gives a shit about because me other people if you think it belongs on that list put it on the list and that's part of the reason why i played it was because of all the praise that you were giving it um and it's absolutely nothing against the game it's just i don't really like honestly it was making me a little bit too tense and a little bit sure. too nervous and i was like i don't feel like doing this right now uh yeah. and it's and it was only nothing gonna get game. worse yeah so so it's 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 really cool. Honestly, put it on the list because I'd love to look up some spoilers and discuss that with you because I, I can tell there's going to be some crazy stuff coming. So that'll yeah. be exciting. Are, are you thinking about playing this, Will? Yeah, I'm about an hour in probably not an hour, probably like 45 minutes uh, before I stop playing. <clears throat> I can't remember why I stopped playing, uh, but I, I'm going to continue it. It's on the list with Pentiment and Citizen Sleeper, which I think I'm like halfway through. Um, I need to get back to all three of those. Cool. Um, the last game I've been playing is My Sweet Addiction. My Crack Cocaine. I thought I had kicked it, but baby, I'm back. Dyson Sphere Program. Mm. Uh, oh. So we, but for all the extra life prep and everybody coming into town, etc., I basically couldn't play Dyson Sphere Program for like five or six days because literally it's on my pooter. And my pooter was was outside. We're running extra life off it, et cetera. Too much stuff going on. And I was like, great, you know, let me like reheal my tracks. <laughs> Nobody's going to be able to tell about my addiction. And then last night I was like, it was like 7 p.m. And I was like, what if I just uh, what if I just see what's going on in Dyson Sphere program? And I booted up. And I blinked and it's 1130. It's four and a half hours later. And I'm like, I got to go to bed. Um, Dyson Sphere program, folks, it's still good. I'm not going to talk about it too much again. This is the 3D Factorio, but the other spin it puts on it is interplanetary. I'm at that like point in the game where it's you have a whole bunch of technology unlocked and you can kind of build the new high tech stuff. But in reality, you have to step backwards. You kind of have to turn around and look at all your lower supply chains because you're like, oh, you know, I I'm making 500 steel plates a minute. But that's not enough anymore because my factory is too big. So then you're like <laughs> looking backwards and you're like duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And it's it's really good because because of where I am with tech and because of how I have my logistics system set up. So, for example, I needed stone to uh, to stone was one of the ingredients in sulfur. And instead of like running around my planet and trying to do it, I literally just flew to a different planet 
I put down this big interplanetary logistics tower, which basically is like a spaceship hub. And I just set up all these miners to just feed like thousands of stone, raw stone into the hub per minute. And then all these spaceships just take the stone off that hub to wherever I need it, which is my factories on my home planet. So it's like it's like this really good thing where I don't even really have to think about it anymore. I'm just like fill my inventory with the hub, some spaceships and the stuff I need. Go anywhere else I want to within the solar system, plop stuff down, feed it in. And all these spaceships just start flying with all the materials to wherever I need it. And it's fantastic. Um, I'm excited to do that on a galactic level because something I've only partially unlocked, but I haven't done yet is galactic. there. Are, there are dozens of solar systems, so I can also f go to a different solar system and set that up so I could have a solar system that is just raw ore, where I'm just extracting literally all the ore out of all the planets in that solar system and shipping it elsewhere. What if people live there, Ian? Fuck them. Are they ore? Because they're <laughs> mine now. Like... <laughs> It's great. I'm at the point where I'm starting to see the end game because like I'm starting to make the components that make up the Dyson sphere. But if I start doing that now, I'll make like one per minute and that's way too slow. So I'm just trying to ramp it up. It's it's a fantastic game. I think I'm 34 hours in. I probably got at least another 20 left. It's fantastic. If you guys have any if you like Factorio, if you have any inkling towards Factorio, if you like hard addictive games, then hell yeah, play Factorio and or Dyson sphere program. I don't like it. You're going to play it one day. I know. I have it installed on in. here. And it's just like the... It's the like, hey, Will, sorry, we got to let you go. And I go, thank you. Have a great day. Close the Zoom. Double click Dyson Sphere. <laughs> <laughs> and just grab a bottle of whiskey. God, um, I, I literally today, I was like, what if I just took a day off and played Dyson Sphere program for like... 18 hours straight because i really would like that first day i played it for eight hours straight i just kept playing it so that's the type of game that i'm talking about wow absolutely not um i'll get there someday uh folks uh that is all the video games that we have been playing this week which means it's time to move on to the news which means i get to play this news theme here we Here's the news, it's gaming news, we're talking about news, what's up news? But now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you though, unlike Factorio. Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. Folks, great song, love it. I'll have you know, I've been dabbling with with a metal version of the news theme. <laughs> well, you got you got what two or three episodes until we swap it out around episode hundo. Ooh. <laughs> oh yeah, you know the new theme of the of the show, so you could base it around that if you'd like. Do I? Do I? Or you only told Jake. I don't well, know it. I, no, no, no. Oh, sorry. It may not be obvious. Um. I'm not going to say it here, but in the in the picture of the new layout, I figured you knew what aesthetic I was going for. Oh, oh, just like a stylistic thing. I thought you were yeah, talking yeah. about like specifics. OK, no, 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 no. Like, but there's music well, maybe associated I'll pivot to that with, then. with that aesthetic. Is, is sure, 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 sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. Um, yes, it's nudity is the aesthetic. <laughs> we just go. Oh, I should just make it all flesh. Mm. <laughs> oh, that'd, be so gross. God, that'd be great. You know, I should have gone to like an AI and been like, make me a three windowed layout for a streamer. <laughs> just flesh <see> window. window. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna God. do that in Dolly during the news. Uh, folks, time for the news. Uh, big news this week out of uh, out of beep, 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 out of Hollywood here. <laughs> the famous. Streets of Rage is getting a movie from the John Wick writer and creator. I could swear um, this was like a deja vu moment for me because I could swear this had been announced like a year ago. So but... like two weeks ago, they announced there's a, a John Wick style movie for. Um... God, you're killing me. Anyways, Ian, you talk about this while I try to figure out what I'm talking about. 
I'm sorry, but I have breaking news that I am trying to confirm. But according to the Tokyo District Public Prosecutor's Office, the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, Yuji Naka, has been arrested for insider what? trading. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yuji? Yes. Uh, apparently, it's related to insider trading related to the new installment from the Dragon Quest series. Uh, <laughs> what? Apparently, there's some sort of Square Enix insider training scandal going on. Uh, and Yuji? Uh, Yuji, yeah, Yuji Naka, he was a lead programmer of the original Sonic the Hedgehog series. He also led development of Night into Dreams, Sonic Adventure, and the Fantasy Star series. Uh, he, I believe, he's also, isn't he's the one who directed, He he's the director of Balan Underworld. This is the man. Yes. We got him. What? We got him. Okay. Yeah, got he's him. been arrested. I, you know, honestly, it took decades of inappropriate fanfic and <laughs> Rule 34, and we had to endure for so long, but I'm just happy somebody is finally paying for that crime. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Your Honor, I, I present... I thought you were going to talk about someone he was arrested for that assassination of uh, was no. it Abe <laughs> the prime, the prime minister, minister. Yeah. Shinzo Abe <laughs> yeah Shinzo that's what his first name is um I thought you were going to say that and I was like Yuji Nago what are that you doing but wild because yeah. it was blamed on Hideo Kojima by accident by right some French guy yeah French guy so that was hilarious. Hilarious if it turned out that it was another game developer. It was an actual it. game dev. <laughs> um, that's wild. Uh, sorry, I, I did not look up the John Wick thing, but like two weeks ago, they announced something else that I don't think it was from John Wick people, but it was supposed to be In like a John style Wick style John of Wick. movie. Yeah. Uh, else. yeah anyway, I Streets of Rage. Where sorry, are you talking yet? about the John Wick video game? No, there was another, there was a movie, there was definitely a movie announcement that I saw in, like, Variety or Deadline or something John that was, Chris, like, yeah. in the style of John Wick, this vi this movie, whatever. Sonic. Yeah. Sonic, yeah. yeah. Double tapping. Uh, yeah. His pet hedgehog gets killed. Um, so I've what never played guys... Streets of Rage. Yeah, I was about to say, what do you guys know about Streets of Rage? Other than it's it's always something I saw in, like, an arcade cabinet. It is When I would go always... to a place that had arcade cabinets. It is always the best soundtrack in a video game. It's always on the list. It's always someone saying, oh, but Streets of Rage has the best soundtrack. I've never heard the soundtrack. Uh, I'm sure it's great, obviously, if everyone is pretty much saying it. Um, yeah. But I have no idea what the plot is. That's not the president. Uh, I'll read it. I'll read it. Girlfriend gets stolen or something. <laughs> Um, it's a series of side-scrolling beat-em-up video games centering on the efforts of several ex-police vigilantes trying to rid a fictional large American city from a crime syndicate that has corrupted its local government. Okay, probably not the best story to have in today's climate about police who think the police department is not beating up enough criminals, and mm. so they go into vigilantism. Mm. But I think it's basically like bad city overrun with cops, over overrun with cops. God, could you imagine? Overrun with bad people. <laughs> I'm and... just imagining them killing them and be like, yeah, they're they're vigilantes. That's your yeah. Miranda rights. Yeah, they're you have the right to be dead. <laughs> they're just that racist camera. cops beating up. Oh. We've already gotten the perfect dread movie. Yeah. Robocop? Or that's essentially it. So... World's worst police officer. <laughs> I mean, I think John Wick makes sense because, again, I'm not crazy about the narrative, but it's just like cop slash ex cop vigilante on the street, and there's a whole bunch of criminals, and it's just a lot of like crazy melee action, yeah, a lot of the raid. It's your dread, it's your raid, it's your, you know, any work. number of. You know, uh, Jackie Chan played a movie where he was a cop, right? Police yes, story. Rush Hour. Not Rush Hour. <laughs> police I'm thinking story. of Police Story. I know. <laughs> I just had to go with the funny one. Man, Rush Hour? Great. The time. Tuxedo. <laughs> uh, the Babysitter. Uh, the Pacifier. That's, um, that's Vinith and Diesel. Um, right? Yeah, it is Vin Diesel. Okay. Vinny D. <laughs> um, more movie news. 
more movie news. Rockstar reportedly turned down Eminem for a GTA movie. Second movie Eminem's been turned down from. First, it was E.T., and now it is GTA. Um, GTA. As we all know, uh, Eminem was replaced by Reese's Pieces in the GTA movie. Um, weird casting role. Well, what a Honestly, heinous a joke. joke. Just, How are sorry. you guys not laughing? I'm just reading the details of this story. And... <laughs> to quote from Ian, you're really funny. <laughs> <laughs> you should be a comedian. Um, yes, please tell me all about this as Ian reads more and more. <clears throat> Sorry, this article is um, not written very well. So there's parts of it that are not clear who they're talking about. But basically, shut up, Jordan, Jordan Midler. Basically, uh, this is from Kirk Ewing, an agent and co-founder of the virtual avatar app Vimi. Um, he had a late night conversation with former rock star boss Sam Hauser. He basically tracked him down to his hotel room one night shortly after GTA 3 came out. And they stayed up late talking about the possibility of making a film. And Sam Hauser was somewhat interested and then he says he took a call at 4 a.m. from one of the producers in L.A. with an offer to make a film. And they said, you know, par you know, secondhand quote here, Kirk, we've got Eminem to star and it's a Tony Scott film. Five million on the nose. Are you interested? And they phoned up Sam Hauser and said, look, you need to listen to this. They want Eminem and the Grand Theft Auto movie and Tony Scott to direct. And he said, not interested. And the deal went away. <laughs> Wow. So this was actually pretty close to happening. I know. I'm I'm interested to know if he was declining on the grounds of Eminem or on the grounds of Tony Scott, because I think Tony Scott could have made a pretty great probably just GTA I mean, when you movie. Think about, but when you think about GTA Three, just came out and it's popping off like crazy. It's one of those things where it's like, this is my baby. I built it. I love it. The world loves it, but I also don't want the money people to come in and fuck it. Sure, fuck I totally my baby, totally you know? understand that. But so what year? What year was this? He said it was shortly after GTA 3. So, so that 2000. Wait. September 11th. Sorry, GTA 3. Oh. I was thinking. Uh, but was yeah, thinking, so, um, the other one. so this was actually pretty close. I mean, I could Those see ones. I could I could see Tony Scott and Eminem making a good movie. But at the same time, I could also see it just being a generic crime cash grab, especially after sure. GTA 3, where it's not the story's not quite there. It's really just the crime element. And sure. the open world element. So, is it time for a GTA movie? Yeah, no, I would have been okay with no. one more. Or Tony Give Scott. the only way I'm allowing a GTA movie to be made is if Paul Verhoeven directs it. He's the only one that's going to be able to toe that line that's of the true. kind yeah. of satire they're satire. trying to do. And he'd put lesbian nuns with in kind of the right. yeah, with kind of the bombastic action nature of it. Yeah, I mean, so so I think. I think I hear what you're saying. I think my problem is what makes what makes Grand Theft out of the video game so interesting is that it's like an open world and that a lot of it has like fine details, you know, like the flip flops work. You can shoot mm -hmm. gasoline on the on the ground mm -hmm. and none of that really translates to a movie. So it really does have to be somebody that is going to embrace the satire aspect of it and take that over the top. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's either Paul Verhoeven or Uwe Boll. <laughs> Honestly, I would I would 100 percent watch. A Grand Theft Auto movie by Uwe Boll. No, because you think Paul Verhoeven's Grand Theft Auto movie is going to have, like, the Weasel News intercut segments, and he's yes. going to have the uh -huh. trailers for the fake movies. Yes. It's going to be. It would who, be great. Who did Tropic Thunder? Ben Stiller. He directed? Yeah. Well, Ben wow. Stiller could do it, then. I would, I would potentially also allow that. Yeah. yeah. As long as Tom Cruise was, like the same role mm -hmm. <laughs> that'd be fantastic but this is this is definitely one of those things where 99 percent of the time this is a bad result and so i, I oh, can see sure. sam hauser saying you know what no let's not yeah no it. more if it you know it's his creative vision so more yeah, power yeah. to him uh dead island 2 it's been delayed folks uh, to April 28th, 2023. There's a statement here, but I don't... Probably not worth reading. Probably is like, hey, we need more time. Um, is this not the... So when you posted this in the Discord, I was like, is this, was this not the Dead Island game that got, like, canceled and never came out? Or was I thinking of some totally other thing? 
No, I think you're right. So Dead Island 2 yeah. was announced and then it just disappeared for a while. Like it was never 10 canceled. years ago. It was just like nobody's talking about it. We're sure. not hearing any news. Everybody assumed it was dead. Yeah. It was 2014. Yeah. A long time ago. Something like that. And then September. It literally stopped development and then they revived it <laughs> two years ago or one year ago. And I think it was uh, this year. Okay, so I had totally missed that. But then you I, posted they this announced and I'm it like, this year. I'm saying they revived oh, yeah. it one or two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. then they're like at E3, not E3 this year, they announced it. And they're like, hey, we're going to do Dead Island 2. And then they had a whole big thing about it. And now it got delayed again. Yeah. So like, LOL. Continues. This was just part of a large news dump from the Embracer group. Uh, the Embracer group, of course, the... Uh, the large entity that has been embracing a lot of studios via acquisitions. Um, they have a mystery six year deal with, quote, several industry partners, end quote, involving multiple large games. So they have some deals in the way. You know, maybe they've got some good AAA stuff coming. Uh, the Dead Island 2 delay, of course. Volition Studio has been moved into Gearbox. Volition did the Saints Row reboot recently, and it uh underperformed it quote did not meet the full expectations uh so basically they said hey how about we just combine volition into gearbox because quote gearbox has all the tools including an experience management team in the u.s to create future success at volition i feel like that's fair i'm not saying gearbox is incredible but volition is very very struggling right now so why not bring them into a larger studio like gearbox that has had more success um, I think, honestly, the biggest thing here is that there is an internal review underway at Embracer, which may lead to spinoff companies, which is kind of weird considering they've been focusing so much on gobbling up studios lately. And they're basically saying here, hey, we may sell some of those back off into the market. <laughs> hmm. So it's it's just part of that whole a lot of the tech industry is cooling right now. We're having mass, you know layoffs uh web 3.0 crypto is crashing you know maybe that's going to start hitting the games industry sooner than we'd like we already saw price increases for consoles and hardware the fucking ps vr2 is 550 dollars. so maybe this is some of that writing on the wall small but there that things are about to get economically worse for all of us gamers uh, not to completely change the subject, but Ian, I did use uh, a bit of the idea we came up with in the Discord for a social post at work, which was uh, all in uh, call Horizon. The new Horizon VR game will cost around a thousand dollars to play. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it got the exact response I wanted, um, which was fantastic. But uh, it's just crazy to think about. It also says here two hundred and thirty four. PC slash console projects by April 2026. 25 of them are AAA, but still. Yeah. That seems that's, like they, a lot. They have a lot of studios. A lot of studios. So. Elex 3. It's, it's already coming out. So excited. That's that out for now? For sure. Elex. No, no. Elex 2 just came out. I don't think it did very well. Um, which I can't see. Um, moving on here. Blizzard Entertainment and NetEase are suspending game services in China. Um, they could not come to, I believe this is because they could not come to an agreement, uh, Correct. over, uh, what was it over? Just the, it, they were just basically, renewing the contract, right? Yeah. Basically Blizzard is not a Chinese company. You have to have an agreement with the Chinese company in order to publish video games over there. Cause essentially it falls under the Chinese company. That's not necessarily something specific with China and or video game industry. I've actually run into it with uh, selling uh, mobile devices in Australia in my personal work where we're like, oh, we have to have some local company or record that is locally in, uh, located in Australia, whether it's our own office or some other company. But basically, uh, Blizzard was selling their games, such as World of Warcraft, Hearthstone, Warcraft 3, Refurged, Overwatch, Starcraft, Here's of Storm, Diablo, Immortal, mm -hmm. in China yeah, via NetEase, and they had a huge fan base there. Uh, huge. Yeah, they have a theme I mean, park. They have their own theme park, and uh, the agreements are set to expire in January 2023, and... They don't have an agreement to the extent that they put out a press release basically saying, hey, this stuff's going to go dark in China. And that's crazy because that is one of their biggest audiences. You think you think it's going to make it or you think they work something out or find a new partner? I don't think it's going to make it. Chinese businesses are pretty hard line, so I don't see them kowtowing. I think this is a tactic by Activision Blizzard to kowtow to, to force them. 
Um, and I don't, I don't think Nettie's uncountable. Uh, I, I guess I should have no. a better question. I, 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 do you think no matter what, the games will go off? Do you think games will go offline on January twenty third or no? Yes, hundred percent. Really, Chinese government. You don't think Chinese government is very strict. Do you remember like there was a week where no, Steam you don't went think, offline? You don't in think China Blizzard is gonna come in at the last second and be like, oh, okay, fine. No, I, I don't think they're in a position to either because they're probably getting forced into a bad deal and i don't know that they would feel comfortable making that deal when they've got xbox yeah i guess i I guess i don't know enough like who's who's losing the most money in this deal blizzard 100 percent. probably blizzard okay it'll be interesting uh yeah a lot of people were like freaking out like it was happening already but uh yeah that's two months away no yeah totally two months away we'll see what happens uh China's big. A lot of gamers. A lot of Blizzard gamers. A lot of gamers, uh, but even more red tape. So, yeah. Love Trying to make it tape. look like I'm just a floating head. You do look like a floating head. Um, Oi! You're like my Harry Potter, my visible cloak. <laughs> I think my favorite tweet today was some <laughs> some gif of a lady holding a blanket up, and like clearly it was green screen to make her look invisible, and it just says. The headline just says, J- Japanese technicians finally figured out invisibility, and Captain Disillusion retweeted it and said, I'm so tired. <laughs> like, clearly, it's just a green screen. <laughs> um, <laughs> invisibility. Moving on here, Microsoft's Xbox streaming console, codenamed Keystone, was pushed back because of its price. Oh, I didn't actually get to read this one. Is this a late edition? Uh, no, Microsoft Gaming- it's been there. It's been Has there for a couple there? days. Oh. Lazy, I, you know, when asshole. I rename them, you tend to forget everything. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, but for those behind the scenes, we just posted it as a raw, nasty-ass URL. So Will is trying to say that he would recognize the nasty-ass URL, but not the headline that explicitly states <laughs> what the article is. for explaining my joke. Um, no, I did not read this article. Uh, I think because I, I only read the top stories, we organize them. It's not worth reading these middling pieces can I, of shit can I, stories. Can I hit the high cap? Because this is actually kind of interesting. Yeah, and uh, if I may, I'd like to jack off dirty. I'd like to jack off daddy <laughs> Xbox for a bit. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, this is from The Verge. Quote, Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer has revealed why the company delayed its plans to introduce an Xbox streaming console. Speaking to Verge editor in chief. Quote. It was more expensive than we wanted it to be when we actually built it out with the hardware that we had inside. We decided to focus that team's effort on delivering the smart TV streaming app. So literally they had what is what you've probably seen was basically a tiny, tiny version of the Xbox Series S that doesn't play games. It just streams the games off xCloud. And uh, basically it was it, it was more than they were aiming for the price of $129 or $99 for that device with a controller bundled in, and they couldn't hit that price with the hardware. And so because of that, they delayed it. They said, we we've gotta we've gotta rework this out. We gotta go back to the drawing board because this is too expensive for what we're trying to hit. And honestly, as PlayStation launches a $550 fucking tethered VR set, this this is very refreshing to hear. They basically said, you know what? This price point doesn't make sense. We're not going to squeeze gamers for it. We're just not going to launch it, at least not right now. I see yeah. a friend in your studio. It's my fat. No. <laughs> Bad dog. I'm going to say it. I caught myself. This is my fat cat. <laughs> Saying how Kyle pronounced it. Um, This is a separate question from the story, which I do congratulate Daddy Xbox for doing this. Um. They say Microsoft want to aim for around 129 or 99. Is that like, is like 109 and 119 bad numbers to price something at? Is that like a psychological thing? Or are these just two random numbers? Probably. The article was written. Like, it's Probably. just interesting to me. I know like the but, nine stuff is because of that. But, but, but he confirmed that the thing on his shelf that we saw pictures of, that was it. They built it in nine months. They had samples of it they took it home it worked it worked really well but it just wasn't hitting the price point and i think that's great let me ask you a question if you were going to buy one of these let's say you didn't have any consoles and you realize streaming is the way to go because of price cost etc and you could buy one of these with the bundled controller 
what would you pay for it? 150. Really? I'd probably say the controller alone is what, 60? 70? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess I'm never really thinking about when I'm, when I'm buying a piece of hardware, I'm not necessarily considering what the price of the internal storage is because I don't know. I've just never really thought about that. Um, but um, I, it, for me, it would come down to like how playable is it? Like how, how what does the streaming work as intended? I mean, yeah, I mean it does, but it's noticeable. Um, yeah. Then yeah, I I'd we, probably pay like one fifty, maybe one. If we lived in a world where streaming yeah. was perfect, yes. Yeah. But also, if we lived in a, in a world, world where streaming Stadia was, was dominating the market, yeah, yeah, they wouldn't be making this. So. I, I, I would say, I would say a hundred. I'm thinking I've got a TV in some room somewhere. Like I've got a TV in my gaming room, and I want to play it off that. But I don't want to buy a Series S, and streaming is perfect for me on that. I'd pay a hundred for it. I feel like at one fifty, me personally, I'd be like, I'm not going to pay one fifty for it streaming gaming device i'd want it to be lightning fast at 150 yeah well yeah. i i would pay 150 for the device plus a controller plus that's just the streaming advice i can put somewhere and then that takes over like the roku and all that like i can just yeah if, if it, it has the full smart tv interface that definitely yeah. adds on top of it and, and it sounds like it does it sounds like it is literally just the xbox one xbox series sx interface and it's just it, you can't play games on it it streams the games and all this aside, it is nice to know that that's what they're thinking about, A. B, yeah. they're making it, and C, they're still considerate of what they want customers to pay. Even if it's a business reason, they're not Sony going out there being like, hey, here's drop a thousand grand yeah. so you can play one game that grand. is coming out. That's a yeah, lot we, of are, money. we are pot committed to this hardware device <laughs> because, we keep, because we keep talking about it. We're so invested in it that we've got to put it out there, even at a price point that does not make sense at all. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm I'm glad they have the capability, the wherewithal, and just just the good stomach sense to be like, let's pump the brakes on this because that's hard in in hardware and software development to pump the brakes on something you've been working on and you've committed to. Yeah, I feel like Sony yeah, so anyways, is yeah. is becoming a little Apple, where they're just like, that's the premium premium product they're, they're, they're trying to but they but, but like look look airpods not in a good way. right how much are airpods if you go out and buy a brand new pair of airpods how much are they right now they're like 180 know, 200 going to yeah i think 179 that shit is so fucking expensive because th these are airpods these were 35 dollars they're like exactly the same as airpods you're paying $150 more because of the fucking apple logo but people pay it because they've bought into the cult so wait, 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 not there say yet. the price again. The AirPods are like 180. These are these are basically AirPods. They're identical charging case, Bluetooth, etc. These industry standard 35. Sony Studio headphones are just 100 bucks. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think my it's AirPods I got Apple, for 100 bucks. Yeah, but you got yours on sale. Yeah. Uh, no, I, that was my yeah. I I refuse yeah. to pay the $180. <laughs> but my point is I'm not trying to hate on Apple, but like Apple has vastly expanded their prices to pad them on basically all of their products like like what is the thing if you want to buy a stand for their monitor it's like two hundred dollars like five hundred bucks yeah. or something that's it's, the, it's ridiculous absurd. but people pay it because they admittedly have done the work to build up that brand and build up that image and people will be like i have the apple i have it has low it's the official one it's the way but, to go it's the best product whether it's actually is or not sony's not there yet but they're trying to, to, to do that price yeah yeah but I think I, I was watching someone recently who was like, oh, I hate people who use iPhones. They're very culty. Every time they go to the store, they're like, oh, I want the next iPhone. I'll wait for the next iPhone, iPhone, iPhone. And I was like, yeah, I get that. And immediately the next sentence out of the streamer's mouth was, but every, I'll buy a Samsung for the rest of my life. Like, I always That's buy stupid. Samsung. That's and I was stupid. like, you're yeah. saying the exact same thing. Like, yeah, but yeah. how many people do you know? will break their phone will die and or not die they'll bring their phone to trade in and they'll buy a completely new phone of a different company with a different amount of software on it like not that many people it's will rare. immediately do that so i think yeah. yes i think iphone has the cult vibes for sure but i think people are more likely to buy the thing they're comfortable with which is most of the people who use iphones anyways 
uh, who aren't buying the latest gear and tech and AirPods and all that sort of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, but but it's still it's it's less the iPhone. It's more just everything other than the iPhone that Apple sells. Totally. Yeah, yeah, that is basically a cult. I, yeah. I don't want to say cult. Sorry, it's it's basically like they are severely it's marking that up because of the brand tax, and people are paying it. And Sony is starting to try and do that because they're like, look, we're going to hit this higher price point because we warrant it. We're not going to make a loss on the PSVR 2, or at least not a significant loss, because we yeah. know people will buy it. And they're about to eat shit. I think Sony the knows they have, price. they have that fanboy audience and they're like, oh, maybe we should try to weaponize them. Like, not weaponize them, but like yeah. take advantage of that the same way Apple does. Um, yeah, it's not yeah. going to work. No. Uh, last cut line here thing. Jake uh, brought this to my attention today. Uh, wonderful game coming out. I don't know if it's a wonderful game. Game coming out <laughs> from uh, Jump Light. Is it Jump no, Light? Jump Light Odyssey is the name of the game. The know, name of the studio I... is uh, the Geek something. Something Geeks. Circle of Geeks. Yeah, let me check. Army of Geeks. Uh, League of Geeks. League of Geeks League is of Geek. making this game called Jump Play Odyssey. And Jake posted it and I saw it. And the ship just looks like a space battleship Yamato design ship. And I was like, Which oh, looks that's like kind of cool. Yamato, the real boat. Yes, but also. <laughs> what with the spaceship hull? <laughs> yeah. But also, all the ships in Yamato look like this that are. Yeah, I went and I looked it yeah, up yeah, after yeah. you said that. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. But uh, it looks fantastic, and I was like, oh, okay, I'll let that pass. Like, they're doing this sort of thing. But they also have an anime opening, like, video story video that is the exact plot of Star Blazers and Space Battleship. Oh. So it is an incredible homage. I Like, I have no problem with it. It looks fantastic. I want to play it. But And they even list Star Blazers in their thing as, like, a 70s reference. So. Did we... Should we make this a new segment on the show where every every episode we pick one upcoming small indie-ish game and we say, hey, this game looks really cool. You should yes. go take a look at it and maybe yeah, wish we should totally it. do that. I, I think that. yes. But I wonder yeah. if it should be something that's out so you people could buy. I, I well, just yeah, think draw attention to it. Wish list it on Steam. Yeah, yeah I think either or. Because because apparently yeah. wishlisting does really impact. Mm -hmm. the, every the indie dev I, I know is like, yeah, please wishlist the game on Steam. You know what? That's a great idea because then every one of those games I can put their little wish list thing in the uh, YouTube. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Jump Light Odyssey. Um, <laughs> so that's uh, the show, folks. Boys, thanks for joining me. It's I've been, uh, There's been a lot of you guys lately and frankly, I'm sick of it. Um, <laughs> I'm sick and tired of folks, your we'll be dingy back faces. <laughs> Saturday night 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, hopefully, I should be home uh, for some grounded. It'll be this weekend. That's all I know. Um, I'm excited to get back into that. Jake, where can yeah. people find you on the internet? Well, maybe Twitter <laughs> at <laughs> underscore Jake Terrio. Um, uh, I have a newsletter on Substack. I'm on SoundCloud. I'm on Instagram. Uh, a, a Google search of my name will bring you many things. Man. And he's also part of Subpixel, subpixelfilms.com. Ian That's Gibson true. at Think Gibson on Twitter, at Thank you. Jerk the Beef on Instagram. Uh, I am your host, Will, at Hunt270 on Twitter, also at Hunt270 on co host, in case everyone goes there. I just went ahead Is that and made the new it. one? Is that uh, the new one? Mastodon sucks. I'm going to call it. It's god awful. God awful. That's not. I don't. Really if right. Twitter goes down, I don't think. It. I don't think I'm going anywhere new. The website was barely loading it. for me tonight, so I have no idea how it works. Uh, because I think everyone was starting to go there. Uh, so it'll be interesting. Uh, the death of Twitter. We all knew it was coming, but we didn't know it was coming this soon. Uh, Elon Musk. You can go fuck yourself. Uh, folks, that's it. Subpixelfilms.com. Love you all, and we will. See See you all next week. Bye.